All right, welcome everybody to today's live webinar, Intro to Cloud Storage. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rebecca Van Dusen. I am a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library. Uh, teaching today's class is Susan Winkler. She's our technology librarian. Before we get started, I want to go over a couple of features when you are in Zoom. So if you move your mouse towards the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see some icons pop up. Uh, at the bottom left is going to be um, if you want to change things with your microphone or your speaker, any of your audio settings. If you're moving towards the center of your screen, you're going to see a chat bubble and a raise hand button. So if you want to chat with us during the webinar, whether that's to ask questions or get some clarification while Susan's doing um, her demonstrations and all that, feel free to write those in the chat. I'll be um, sort of behind the scenes answering questions and posing them to Susan along the way. So you, um, you'll be getting responses from me if you're typing in the chat. Also, if you want to speak your question rather than typing in the chat, I know sometimes that's easier, especially if it's a longer question, feel free to use that raise hand button because that's going to tell me that, hey, I want to speak rather than writing my question out. So, and yeah, basically the main thing is um, feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar. That's what we're here for. We're here to answer your questions. So don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid if you need us to go over something again or demonstrate something again. Um, we're here to help you. So that's the main bit. Um, I think that's pretty much it from me. We will have this recording on YouTube after today, um, and we'll send out an email with the recording as well as the handouts, which I'm going to put in the, um, the chat in just a second. Not mine too. <laughs> <laughs> we're prepared. Um, but yeah, you'll get the handout as well. Um, so then you can review it later, or, you know, if you want to go and watch the recording again, um, plenty of people will watch these multiple times, just kind of let things sink in. I know that for me, sometimes it's easier to just sit back and kind of let it wash over me for the first time and then take a more in-depth look the second time. Um, but you may be different than me. Um, sometimes people learn differently. I'm a very visual learner, so sometimes it helps me to just sit back and watch. Um, and of course, I'll also put in our emails so that you can also email us after the webinar as well. But I think that's pretty much it for me. How are you today, Susan? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Rebecca? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, and I hope everybody out there is also also doing well on this Tuesday afternoon. Yes. Um, we will go ahead and jump in and get started. And again, like Rebecca said, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or uh, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll let you um, ask your question out loud. Uh, we do it that way because I know as you go along, if there's a question you have, I I'm the kind of person who wants my questions answered right away when I have them, um, and then I can move on to the next thing. And since most of the technology that we work with, it kind of it all builds. Um, it's good to ask those questions when you have them. And if you have a question, it's probably true that someone else will have a question, or you might spark a question um, based on asking yours. So we we definitely encourage you to ask questions. Um, we are in the webinar format, which makes it a little bit more interesting than say if we were in person, um, where you could just kind of casually ask things. Um, but we do want you to feel as comfortable as you can with asking whatever questions you have. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and start with my PowerPoint for today. Um, one second here, let me pull that up. It's gonna take me just a second here to pull that up. And then we'll get started. And we'll talk about our agenda for today. And then we'll go from there. All righty. Okay. Oops, I have to make sure my pop up goes away. Okay. All right. So I'm hoping everyone can see um, intro to cloud storage. Yes, and we I'm see the start our slideshow here. All righty. Okay, so the stuff we're going to cover today, um, since this is this is an introductory class, we are going to talk about what the cloud is. Uh, it's not just puffy uh, cumulonimbus clouds in the sky. Uh, it does actually relate to technology. Um, and we'll talk about some terms and definitions of the cloud. Um, it kind of depends. There's two major uh, pieces to cloud in the terms of technology. And one is basically cloud storage, which we're going to spend more time focusing on today. And then also cloud computing, um, which we'll talk a little bit about too. So uh, we'll talk about what kind of stuff you can put in the cloud. Uh, can some considerations for if you're interested in kind of beginning your journey into cloud and cloud storage. We'll talk about the disadvantages and advantages 
Um, and then we'll talk about the cloud storage providers. Um, it's by no means an extensive list, uh, but just to give you an idea of where to start. And then we'll talk a little bit about, we'll go ahead and do a demo of OneDrive and Google Drive, which are two um, cloud storage providers that give you a certain amount of storage for free that you can kind of try out. Um, so if you're just getting into cloud for the first time and want to see how it works and kind of get an idea, um, these both allow you to have a little bit of space for free um, to sort of practice and get started. Uh, and then we'll go into a list of additional resources where if you're, you become really interested in the topic, um, there's lots of room for um, additional uh, research and or to pick a different service that you might like more uh, than the two we're going to cover today. Okay. Any questions before we begin? I don't see any so far. All right. So what is the cloud? Rather than just thinking about big puffy clouds, um, sort of the, the it might be kind of apocryphal, but the, the origin story of where that name came from was essentially as people were beginning to talk about what what it could be and they didn't know what it would look like. So they just kind of drew a big puffy cloud on the whiteboard as they were brainstorming ideas um, and it kind of stuck. But in reality, what it is, is essentially um, a network of computers or servers, and we'll talk about what servers are in just a moment too, that are owned by a person or a company. Um, and they allow other people or companies to use those servers or networked computers to store their data, the personal data or company data. Um, that's one definition. Uh, second is a term used to describe web-based applications. That means things like Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs, uh, even your email is a web-based application and files that are stored on a shared remote server. And remote just means, you know, not in the same location that you are. And it's accessible to users through a login. So essentially you have to have a username and a password to get into and to access your files or files that have been shared with you. Okay, and I like that definition too because it also includes the application factor, which is the second part of cloud. There's cloud storage and cloud computing. And cloud computing is essentially using those services that are only available that are available online. So, like Microsoft Word has. Uh, a version that is a cloud-based version, so you can access it online, and then you know you can create the documents live. Same with uh, Google and Google Docs. So I like this definition because it gives you a little bit more of an idea that there's more than one facet to the cloud. Okay. Uh, I also like this third definition because it reminds me of uh, you know a a physical thing, uh, so it might help put it into more of a, a physical reality terms for us, but essentially it's a locker where you can stash your data. So it kind of makes me think of when I was in high school and I would carry my backpack with all my books and things to each class. And then, man, that got really heavy. So I would throw stuff in my locker after the first class. So essentially it's that idea. You can pull something out of the locker, access it, use it, and then put it back if you want. Okay. Okay. All right. So since I mentioned local, uh, that I mentioned cloud computing, um, we're going to talk a little bit about what cloud computing and cloud storage are specifically, and then also local storage and local computing. So local storage and local computing is what happens when you use your physical computer in front of you, and all of your data and files are stored on that personal physical computer. So it's the personal hard drive that's in that computer where everything gets stored. So, uh, and then it's software that you've installed on the computer. So if you remember, <laughs> not that long ago, we were all using CDs where we would stick the CD into the CD drive and then it would install the program for us onto our computer. That's local computing because then you were running it. You didn't need to use the internet to download or, or install anything. It was all phys physical pieces. So cloud computing, on the other hand, is used to complete the digital tasks or get something done um, rather than just storing that data or files 
it's using the processing power to perform a function. And again, it's online. So it needs, it requires that internet connection or online access to allow you to access that program, that web-based application um, to get something done. And cloud storage is essentially the virtual storage. Um, and it's actually spanning many different physical storage spaces. So if you think of it as that locker, again, it's your, your locker that you can access from home, but your data is actually on a server in Texas, per, perhaps the locker is actually in Texas or California or you know, Oregon or Maine or wherever. Um, and the physical storage devices are usually in multiple locations that are off site from where you're currently uh, physically accessing them from. And um, it's essentially kind of a, a more passive experience of just storing things. Okay, so there's two different kind of tracks you can take. Cloud computing is you're actively, you know, calling something up and doing something to it, whereas cloud storage is, is you're putting it there just so that you have it as a backup. Okay, hoping that makes sense. Uh, so I liked this example of how cloud computing works. Uh, essentially, you have secure access to all of your applications and data from any networked device. So that means in the case of something like uh, Google Drive, you can access Google Drive from an app on your phone. You can access it from a computer. You could access it from a smart a tablet. Uh, and you can get to all of those things that you've stored there. You can get to them on any of your devices. Um, so that's and then you could do something to them. So. So that's where cloud computing comes in, okay? So I mentioned servers. Servers are basically physical computers that respond to requests over the network from a different computer. So your physical laptop computer here, after you've logged in to your cloud provider, it basically is sending a message to that server elsewhere in the world to call up your data that you're specifically asking for. Okay, and usually those servers are going to be in a data center. Um, it's a physical facility that stores the physical equipment, like the servers, um, for the providers of cloud access. And they often also have um, complex cooling systems because the energy that it takes to run a server means that they can run very hot. So there's definitely cooling systems in place to kind of help um, keep the servers at optimal functionality. And occasionally, you know, they have to replace certain parts of it. So it's the hardware um, that goes into uh, the cloud. Okay. Uh, if you've ever, if you are local, uh, you might have been to the uh, supercomputing facility on campus here um, at Blue Waters. I think they are now, Rebecca, you sent me that article that I think they've, um, they're going to be doing something new, uh, so it may not be open anymore for, for tours. Um, but if you ever hear for the uh, campus, was it, let's see, Campus Engineering Day, I believe, uh, the Engineering Open House, uh, you could go and take a, take a tour of the Blue Water Supercomputer Facility. And it looked very similar to this picture here, um, rows and rows of servers with complex cooling systems. Okay. Yes, you are right, though. They are ceasing operations. Um, yeah, I think they're going to build they something They are working on something else. new, yeah. but I I don't know. I don't think they're um, doing the tours right now mm -hmm. because of COVID and then because it's shutting down. Yeah. So you might be able to find um, YouTube videos on YouTube, though, of, of uh, facilities if you're curious about what data centers look like. Um, I think places like Google and I think they have some YouTube videos of what a Google data center looks like um, that you can find on YouTube to get kind of a, the same sense. Uh, but you are also probably already using the cloud. You may just not realize that you're using the cloud because our email is actually also using the cloud. As you go to a physical computer and you call up your email, those emails are actually stored on a ser physical server somewhere else. Uh, if you're using, like we said, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, that's cloud computing, um, Microsoft Office 365, which is basically Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all those, but in the online environment, um, even picture services like Flickr or other hosting sites like Shutterfly, places like that, they're basically using um, cloud storage to uh, 
how is your data that you're using to then order those picture, the physical pictures? Okay. Any questions so far? Just kind of a quick, quick background there on the cloud. I don't see anything so far. Okay. So next we're going to talk about what you can put into the cloud. And we'll talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages. All right. So pretty much you can put whatever you want into the cloud, um, any files that you want, um, as long as they don't violate the terms of service for whatever company you're, um, you have a username and password with. Um, and so that means pictures, documents, music, videos, basically whatever you want. Uh, a lot of people will choose cloud storage as a backup location for important files, because that way it's not only saved on your physical computer at home or your laptop, but it's also an offsite storage option. So uh, for example, if you were to have a fire at your house um, and let's say the your laptop melts due to the, the fire, um, if you have things backed up in the cloud, you can, once if you get a new laptop, you can immediately get them all back on your computer just by downloading them all from your cloud provider. So um, it's a great way to kind of protect your information uh, and make sure that you have a chance to still um, uh, get all of that information that you had had. Um, I think about it too as a, we have kind of a, there's like a 311 idea. <laughs> <laughs> not just for TSA, um, but the 311 in, in uh, technology is essentially to have three places that you put important files. You know, one is a physical device that's somewhere in your proximity. Uh, one is um, a physical device that is not necessarily in your proximity. And then one is uh, somewhere offsite like the cloud. Okay. So just keep keeping it all in and we have a class where we talk we talk about this in our internet um our other class too about the internet where we talk about backup and storage too this one is more specifically about cloud as a storage option but um you can check out that other class too if you'd like so okay so some considerations uh there are some advantages for going into cloud storage uh it's certainly convenient you can log in from any device and you can access any of your stored files. Um, it's very easy to share files with other people and folders via link or email. And you can, again, take you can also take away that permission from someone else very easily. So for example, if you're planning a, a bridal shower for someone, you can, and you're planning it with other people, you can share all of your ideas for what you're gonna have for you know, food and drink and whatever games you're gonna play and everything. And then after it's done, you can delete those files out of there, or you can just, you can revoke permissions for someone, okay? Um, space constraints are both an advantage because it doesn't, the items do not necessarily take up physical storage space on your physical computer. In this case, if you're putting them in the cloud. Now, if you're using it for backup, then yes, you would have it in both locations. But if it's something you don't need to have on your specific computer where you access it all the time, you could put it up in cloud storage and then just leave it there. And then it's not taking up space on your physical device. Okay. Uh, online backups can be controlled a bit by you as the user. There are options to do it manually yourself where you move files individually or folders individually and can pick. Uh, you can have it scheduled where you basically tell your backup service you want it to scan your computer, you know, on the first of every month and it'll scan your computer and take whatever's new and add it to your backup online. And it can be selective or comprehensive, meaning you tell it what to do. And that makes it a little bit easier for some of us that if we don't remember to do it every month or we don't have a set schedule when we do it. Um, it can happen where, you know, if I forget for one month and then my computer crashes, all of that new stuff that I've done in that month, if I haven't backed it up, it's lost. But if I have it set where I have an online backup that does it once a month, then maybe I will be able to recover a lot more. Okay. Any questions about the advantages? Okay, I'll go over um, the disadvantage. 
There was a question that I sort of answered, but I'll pose it to you as well. Someone is asking, um, what would be another physical place, like besides obviously your house that you may want to store your drive or your external drive or your backup in? Excellent question. Yeah. So uh, like Rebecca just said, external hard drives, uh, if you're familiar with those, or even they're slightly larger, basically, than um, flash drives or thumb drives. Uh, where you can move data onto them. And then you've got kind of like a brick full of your information. Uh, safety deposit box. If you still have a safety deposit box, you can put it in there. Uh, a lot of folks I know will ask a friend if they can put a backup copy at the friend's house, just like you would have, um, you know, a backup, like your spare key to your car in or a spare key to your house in case you locked yourself out of your house. Um, whoever you trust um, that's among your friends to have that are living in the same area, but not in the same building or same physical location as you, um, that maybe you would store it with them. Uh, some folks say store it at work. I don't personally do that. I have seen people suggest that. I personally don't do that because I like to keep work and you know work files separate from personal files. Um, so I don't personally do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, storage locker, it, it's really up to you. Um, you know, safety deposit box is certainly a fairly secure route to go, uh, but again, a friend or a family member um, that can hang on to it for you. Someone that may have like an emergency set of keys that you've lent already might be a good option. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. mine in a fireproof box. I don't have yeah. a second location, so that's something I need to maybe think about as well. My parents have a safety deposit box, but I'm nowhere near that. So yeah. <laughs> I can't really borrow that from them. And it's almost, it's already a second, it's already a second location for you if it's a fireproof box in your house. So that's, we have that as well, um, where uh, most of our external hard drives are in a, a locked fireproof box in the house uh, as our, as the second of the physical storage locations. And then the first obviously is the laptop. So you know, if there was a fire at my house today, right now, uh, the fireproof box would still be would still be there and be fine. So, yeah. And then my third is cloud storage. So, that's a great a great question, though. Yeah. Um, and I I mean I do know someone who basically set up his own home network where he backs everything up to his own home network and backs it up to the cloud and then backs it up. And you know, um, I'm not quite that. Sounds fancy. <laughs> it's very fancy. I'm not quite that worried about about my my data. <laughs> that seems like a more advanced. Um, <laughs> yes, and that is a more sort advanced of thing. thing to do. Um, and I mean, you can learn how to do that too if you want, but it is a more advanced route to go. Whereas in this case, you could just pay a service and be like, "All right, you know, set it up and forget it." Kind of. So, great question. I'm gonna take That's all the questions here. that we had from that little. Um, someone also said that uh, they mentioned in their question if it all fits on a flash drive and then blah, blah, blah. I do not recommend using a flash drive for your backup. That's not going to be something that's going to last in the long run. And obviously it's small. It's easy to lose. I recommend looking into uh, something like an external hard drive. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but a flash drive should not be something you're using for a backup. Yeah, um, and here's the, here's the caveat there too. Uh, if you wanna put as much as you can on a flash drive and then take that flash drive and put that flash drive in a safety deposit box somewhere, sure, go ahead. Um, I mean, that's your choice. Uh, I think we tend to have uh, enough data for a lot of us where an external hard drive will have more room and is a better option for, because a lot of flash drives, they don't have enough room. For me, for example, I do a lot of photography. I got a lot of music. You know, I got a lot of scrapbooking, digital scrapbooking files. I'd fill up, you know, even a two gig flash drive in like barely any time flat. And it wouldn't cover all of the stuff I need to back up. Um, but if you can find one that's big enough and that you want to use, that's okay. But Rebecca's right. Uh, when we think of the different kinds of things that can happen with whatever method of storage you're going to use, flash drives are small. They are very easy to lose and or forget and leave somewhere. So it's very easy to, you know, you, for example, here at the public library, you, you know, you plug it in, you do what you need to do, 
you're done and you leave and you forget your flash drive and it's still in the computer here at the library. Um, we go around, we notice it, we try to contact people um, with their lost flash drives, but they don't always get reunited with people. Um, so it's very easy to forget a flash drive somewhere yeah. or to lose it, as you said. So um, CDs, for a long time, people were backing stuff up on CDs, but again, CDs are kind of flimsy media and they scratch really easily. Um, so unless you're basically making that backup and then taking that CD and putting it somewhere where you're never gonna, you know, putting it in that fireproof safe, perhaps, um, you know, and then what, what happens with CDs now? Most laptops don't even have CD drives anymore, right? <laughs> so we're moving away from having that as a, as a method. So it's good to think about, you know, you have to kind of shift your method with the technology as it shifts to. So yeah, great question and great comments. Along with that, <laughs> and the idea of how much does it cost, you know, cost can be an issue. Uh, with cloud storage, it does require an internet connection. So you either have to have a data connection with your device or um, you know, be somewhere where you trust the network that you're in um, and can upload things. There's the potential for cost for both the internet access and the cost for the spa space itself. Um, and when I say space, we still have to think of it in terms of physical storage space. Like if you have your closet, you have a finite amount of space in your home closet. You have a finite amount of space online that you get for free and then you pay for more it's like you're renting it's like you're renting an apartment right so you're renting an apartment if you need more than one apartment you have to pay to rent a second a second apartment or to rent a storage locker so you do have to consider the costs uh privacy and security not all services let you password protect files and folders uh once shared with someone the files are they're out there they're in the wild um, they might be downloaded or shared with other people that you hadn't intended. Um, and you have to think about how secure something is. Um, there are some things where, unless you really trust your cloud service provider to provide as much security as you want, read through those terms of service of the providers and take a close look at what they're asking and what they're doing to protect your data. And there are some consumer watchdog organizations out there that do pay attention to these things. And as more and more uh, companies and individuals moved to storing things online, I think we're gonna see a shift in more of that protection being a, a question that people are asking first. Like before they sign up for a serve in their service, they're asking, you know, how are you protecting my data? Because I think for a lot of folks it's, oh, it's free, great. But then, oh, how are you protecting my data? So. So just to give you kind of an idea, um, we put this together the first time we taught the class and we keep updating it each time we, we teach this workshop um, to give you a sense of what's changed. And these are just four of the major providers that you might've heard of. There are several out there. Um, so this is just, again, just scratching the surface of how many providers are out there. But Google Drive is one that we're gonna um, demo today. Um, it does require a Google account with, and you can access it from a computer, phone, or tablet, and you do get a certain amount for free. Um, that 15 gigabytes that's free is all is coming across as your email, your cloud storage, and anything else that you put up there like photos or music or anything else. Okay, And then after that, of course, there are tiers where you can then pay and you can either pay per year or per month. And that's how most of these generally work um, is that you pay either by month or by year. So Dropbox is another one that a lot of people like to use. Um, you get two gigabytes for free, two terabytes is $9.99. Um, I believe that's per month. So I should have put per month on there. Um, I'll edit that before we send out the uh, handout. And OneDrive, which we're also gonna demo today, um, is Microsoft's product. So Google Drive is Google's product. And you can see here you get five gigabytes for free. Um, and then 
up to six terabytes for a whole family. So you can merge your, you know, your storage space across an entire family too, if you want. Um, and then there's iCloud and iCloud Plus. The distinction here is basically that iCloud is the version you get for free and iCloud Plus is the premium version, which costs money and has extra features. So in case this is super overwhelming, we also have uh, organizations and magazines and other places that do this kind of stuff for us. Uh, PC Magazine rates and reviews cloud storage providers and online backups. So this link down here at the bottom is for PC Magazine's uh, cloud storage for 2022 and what you can get for free, how big your files can be, um, and um, if they also have the cloud computing side of it with the applications and whether or not they have the different apps that you can put on your different devices. Okay, take a quick sip here. And then they do the same thing for backup services. Now they're not the only game in town for this, for these, um, but I like that their chart is very easy to understand too, but they are not by far not the only um, a company or resource that reviews um, cloud storage providers. Okay, uh, Consumer Reports is another good one to look at. And the library actually does have access to Consumer Reports. So if you want us to look that up for you and send you the information, we certainly can as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and uh, ask for any other questions regarding kind of the general idea of cloud, cloud storage, um, any kind of questions you might have. One of the big ones I usually get asked is about security. And that is a big, important question, security and privacy. Um, the best answer we usually give for that question is to check with each provider <clears throat> and make sure that you're comfortable with their terms of service. And again, going out, reviewing the documentation that others have on that company's practices and whether or not you feel comfortable going with that company. Um, now, when I say that you can put anything in the cloud, that's true, you can, uh, but you do wanna be aware of the kinds of things you put there that then are shared with other people or what could be gotten into at some point. So for example, um, I'm still not putting my tax information up there. I'm not putting any financial or banking statements in the cloud myself. Uh, so I'm staying away from those personal identifying things being in the cloud. However, I'm putting I'm putting photos, I'm putting music, um, you know, documents for my personal use. I'm putting all that stuff in the up there. <clears throat> so it's really kind of comes down to what you're comfortable with putting up there in the cloud. Okay. Other questions? Or comments? Someone is asking. How do you separate what goes into the cloud? Yeah, so it really it really does come down to um, your your own comfort with what you put up there and what you <clears throat> keep just on your computer or your external hard drive. Um, like I said, for me, I'm not comfortable yet with putting my banking statements or my tax statements or tax information up in the cloud on either of my cloud um, cloud accounts that I have. Um, but I will put photos up there and my, you know, music, digital music and um, other documents I'll put up there. So it really comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you're comfortable with having up there and also what stuff you might want to share with others. Since I share photos with other family members a lot, it's really easy to share them from a cloud storage site or a cloud provider. Uh, and it makes it a little easier for me to share that stuff. How about yourself, Rebecca? <clears throat> um, I I have a backup for my computer that is like the physical one. What goes into the cloud for me? Um, I put my photos up there. I put my music up there. What else? My my phone is backed up to the cloud. Um, I don't have my entire computer on the cloud. It's that's on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. 
on my physical hard drive, but the cloud, yeah, it's stuff like photos, music. I have documents up there, stuff that I'm editing that I want for my own personal reference. And what's nice too, is it doesn't have to just be backup. Like I create files in the cloud that are just living in the cloud, for example, like documents that I want to access from um, multiple locations. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to actually have that physical drive with you if you want to work on something from a different location. Yeah. So that's an example where, you know, I know a lot of folks will do things like resumes and cover letters and they'll put their resumes and cover letters in the cloud so that then uh, whenever they tweak things for new positions, they just tweak it and save a new version of it. But if it's in the cloud, they can also access it, you know, here at the library or while they're on vacation. Uh, so that's another reason you might want, you know, certain types of things in the cloud that you're going to be working with. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. That's a great point. And we use it here at work too. Um, you know, we, Rebecca and I collaborate on various documents and handouts like today's handout. And we have a, a shared third cloud uh, spot where we have put all the handouts that then we can uh, make edits and change things for each other, um, which is a little bit more on the cloud computing side of things. But then we store them there and host them there so that then the next time we teach the workshops, we can go in and access what we've done in the past and then make all our changes and edits. So we're also using it here at work too. So, other questions? We do have a raise hand. I can go sure. ahead and let yeah. them talk Absolutely. Here. All right. So they should be able to hopefully unmute their microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, for the first time, I'm using iCloud and mostly on my phone. And I'll get a message saying your phone isn't backed up. So, you know, I hook up and I back it up. But I don't understand how I can pick things that I want to go into the iCloud. For instance, if I'm on my laptop and I do want to store some things like you, I don't want my tax information out there, mm -hmm. my personal letters out there. Sure. So how do you control? what you're putting into the iCloud when you're on your whole file system. Yeah, so, and that really depends on whether or not you're, um, you have the automatic backup that's happening. Um, and Rebecca can speak to this too, since she also has an iPhone and a, and a Mac computer, MacBook computer, and how they sync across devices too, which um, can get you into trouble if you have a photo, at least for me, would be a photo that, you know, I'm deleting off of my phone because I don't have enough space for it. But since it's synced to my computer, it also deletes it off of the off of the MacBook. Um, so yeah, so I actually access for my iCloud, I actually access it on a computer by going through a browser and then checking to see what's there and then adding stuff that I want or taking things out that I don't want to be there. Oh, so, good answer. And a lot of times too, you'll have an iCloud folder that's on your computer in your finder. So if you go into your finder and you find a folder that says iCloud, you should be able to look inside that folder and then move stuff out of there if you don't want it to be in iCloud anymore. I can also send an email that that we can may help you. Info too. Yeah. Um, basically when you're setting up iCloud 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 <laughs> you can um, check mark what you want to include or exclude in terms of like documents or photos or messages now that's it's going to just umbrella things so it's not going to capture like individual documents you may have to move those yourself but I can send that information along in the follow-up email as well Okay, so yeah. I think I get it. As a first-time user, I'm on a routine backup schedule for my phone, and it's probably taking everything on my phone, which fortunately, I just use my phone for a phone, but when it comes to my laptop, it's nice to know that I can decide what goes into the cloud, and it's just how do I do that? That's, as a new user, I have no clue. Yes, and we can send, yeah, we can send you some information from Apple support. Um, is your, your home computer, is it a, also a Mac? Is it a MacBook? No, it's a, it's a, or it's a PC, PC yeah. Windows. Okay. Yeah. In yeah. that case, it might be helpful to use the browser version. It's super mm -hmm. useful. Um, it's just iCloud.com and it would have you log in with your Apple ID and your password. And then you could go in and 
um, delete stuff or move stuff if you needed mm -hmm. it moved. Yeah. And that, um, that access is going to be very similar to what we're going to cover with OneDrive and Google Drive today. Um, okay. The principle is very similar of the, you know, upload something or take it out, delete it, move, you know, make a folder, create it. You can do all that stuff with the iCloud too. Thank you. Yeah. And we actually just talked about that for next time. Um, we'll probably include a demo of the iCloud in the browser browser view of iCloud too, because enough people have questions like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, other questions? Yeah, it can get it can get very tricky um, to know uh, if something's actually going where it's supposed to go <laughs> too. Yeah, and also I know we've said this in the past before, but you may try to to create a test document or save a test photo, something you don't Absolutely. really care about, yep. and then move it back and forth from the cloud to your computer and just see where it goes and see where it saves and see what happens if you delete it. That way, you know, you're not concerned about it being a personal photo or a document you're afraid of losing. If you use that test document or test photo, what have you, then you may feel more comfortable about what happens to it when you are moving or deleting it. Yes. And then you'll know also what you can change in your settings if it doesn't do what you want it to do. Um, a lot of times with technology, I think it comes down to we don't know how to do something until we need to know how to do something. Um, and then we have to source where we can find that information um, on how to do something. So a lot of times it is a little bit of trial and error. Uh, and and troubleshooting and testing. <laughs> so yeah, I recommend Rick and I both recommend that, um, especially because if you if you don't know how things are set up, you won't know how to control what you can control. So yeah. yes, and I'm all about making sure people that technology helps, not hinders you <laughs> in your process. So yep, that's our hope at least. Okay, so if there are any other, again, any other questions, feel free, um, toss, them, toss them to us. Uh, I'm gonna just go over a, a demo of OneDrive and a demo of um, Google Drive real quick. Uh, it won't take very long, so we'll have plenty of time for questions, uh, but I do want everybody to get kind of a sense of how they work um, and they work in a similar way. So I am gonna just go ahead and um, stop sharing this so I can get into my live demo here too. So we're going to start with, do, do, do. oh, and actually I will show you this real quick too. I'm going to share this with you. Um, this is the PC Magazine uh, cloud storage and file sharing services. Um, I do want to show this real quick. So if you see here, they're going to give you an idea of, you know, what's best for which kind of system you're in. Uh, and if you hit compare specs here, this is where you'll get that chart that I had um, copied, where it'll tell you everything that it offers, and you can check mark and make sure. Um, and these are the ones that they're that they're recommending. So you can see, um, you know, Apple iCloud Drive is the one that you're going to have for most Apple users. Um, that's iPhones and MacBooks. Okay. It can still be used for PC users, but. When you yes. sign, when you get an Apple device, you'll automatically get an iCloud account because you'll have that Apple ID. Absolutely, thank you, Rebecca, for clarifying. Yeah, so even so, I, for example, have an iPad and a Windows PC. So I have an iCloud account for my iPad, but I also have, you know, stuff um, OneDrive for my PC. So so I use both of them, and you can again, you can move things and put them in either one. So okay. So I just want to show that. And then the online backups, I don't know, did that switch or is it still sharing the other one? It's showing so the best online, online backup backups. services. That's Perfect. What I see. Okay, excellent. So for online backup services, these are, these are going to be uh, services where you're not necessarily calling those documents and accessing them and using them regularly. This is essentially like taking that external hard drive, backing up the computer fully, and then taking it to the safety deposit box and leaving it there um, with these. So like Backblaze and iDrive, those are for backup specifically. So it's not so much the I'm going to do something and use a web-based application like 
open a Google Doc and make a Google Doc and do something with it. It's that you're just putting the store, the backup somewhere. So if your computer crashes and you have to re put everything on a new computer, you could use something like this. Okay. So just to kind of compare the two. Okay. Stop sharing that. And then I will go ahead and jump into our, let's see, we'll do OneDrive first. So OneDrive is uh, Microsoft's cloud computing and cloud storage provider. Um, this is what the home looks like once you've logged in and you do get um, five gigabytes free. So if you wonder about how much space something takes up, usually um, a digital movie might be a couple gigs. Uh, most documents aren't going to take up a whole lot of space. Most pictures aren't going to take up a whole lot of space individually. But it's just when you start to get a lot of them that then you'll you need to you know expand all the space uh, constraints. Okay, so in OneDrive, uh, you can see here that I've got some folders that I have created already. I'm going to go ahead and start with kind of a a general overview of the layout. Up here in the top left corner, those nine little dots here, that is your app launcher. Basically, when I click on that, I would be able to get to other online apps or web-based applications. Um, I could go into my Outlook email. I could go into Teams. If uh, Teams is something folks use a lot for work purposes or if you have other people on your same network that you can communicate, it's like chat functions and everything else like that. And then I could go into Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint <clears throat> and create documents online. You could also go into the calendar or use Skype. Okay. Okay. Questions about App Launcher? You'll notice that this is very similar to what you'll see with other uh, services that provide both cloud storage and cloud computing, because here they want to be able to send you to those places where you can do that cloud computing stuff. You can create documents documents, you can create presentations or whatever you need to do. Okay. Um, across the middle, your search gives you the chance to search anything in your um, cloud for a file or um, so for example, if I wanted to search for a puppy, I could put in puppy. And it's going to find the two files that I created um, the last time we taught the class uh, for puppy. Okay. So I could do the same thing for cat. No cats. Maybe I have kitten. There we go. I have kitten. I have a kitten in a tree. So anyway, you get the idea. So it's a chance for you to very easily search for anything you've put up there, as long as you remember either what you've called it or um, if you've tagged it with something. Okay. Over on the right-hand side, the little diamond you move my little window down here. It's a little meta. Okay, put me down in the corner. Um, the little diamond is how to upgrade to uh, the plans and see the pricing of different plans. The gear, that's your settings where you can go in and change things about how your over your uh, OneDrive works. Um, and then if you need help, there's a whole help menu under the question mark here. Uh, and you can, again, you can search for help you know, if I wanted to know what my personal vault means, I could put in personal vault and it will tell me what the personal vault does. So in case anybody is curious, because you might have seen that it said personal vault there, um, that is a special folder that is protected by an extra layer of security. Okay. So that's where somebody who wanted that extra protection for things like their tax documents or um, banking statements could put it in that personal vault instead. Okay. Uh, but here that's the help and you can search for different topics there. Um, the LC is just uh, the my library account information. So this is our library demo account. So if I click on that, it's just going to tell me what the um, email address is and then information about my um, account with Microsoft. Okay, underneath that we'll go back over to the left hand side. And if you see over here where it says my files, if I click on that, that's basically like my home landing page here, where it's going to show me the different folders and files that I have created and put into uh, OneDrive. Okay. 
recent would show me things I've worked on recently or that I've just opened um, within the last, uh, that I've last touched. Sort of like on your actual computer where if you see recent on either File Explorer or in the Finder, it'll show you things that you've worked on recently. Okay. Uh, specific for photos, if I have photos, photos um, will automatically go into and be sorted into albums. Uh, you can change that a little bit yourself when you go in and edit and change things around, but it will automatically organize them by date. Okay. All right. And then shared would be anything that I have shared with someone else. So if I'm collaborating with someone on a project or a presentation, I could share that presentation with them. And then they could also have different privileges. And we'll talk about what those privileges and permissions are in just a moment. But if I share something with them, then they have access to it as well. OK. And then you have a recycle bin, just like you do on your actual computer, where you have the trash or the recycle bin. If you delete something from your OneDrive, it doesn't automatically delete. It goes into the recycle bin or the trash, trash bin, where then you have to empty it out, OK? Just like on your actual computer. So for those of you who have a whole bunch of stuff in your recycle bin or your trash, um, if you don't need that stuff anymore, make sure you remember to empty it out. OK, so I'm going to go back to my files here. Uh, if we see the new, the new allows me to create a new folder an, or a new document, either in Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, or a form survey, or a plain text document. So this is all stuff that I can do for with cloud computing if I want to create something new. I can also upload something from my computer. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I want to upload a file. And I'm going to take a file from this specific computer that I'm on and put it in the cloud storage so that I can access it when I'm on any computer um, in the future. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and hit files. And I'm going to upload a file. And I'm going to go to my desktop here and I'm going to pick the kittens in the grass and I just hit open and that's going to upload that photo of the kittens to my OneDrive. Now when it's not in a folder of any kind it's just up there that's why it's appearing down here next to the cat reaching this is the kittens in the grass now I can take the kittens in the grass and I can put them in a folder if I want um, I can put them in, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to create a new folder today and I'm going to name my folder kitten photos in January. Okay, I'm going to create that file or that folder rather and now you'll see that folder just created up here as well. I can move my kittens in the grass to the folder and I can do that. Let me go back for a second. I can either do that by dragging and dropping. So holding down my left mouse button, still taking the grass and moving it up here. Or I can do that by opening the kittens in the grass and picking from the list across the top here of places to go or move it. Okay. Or if I'm here and I check mark next to it, so I've selected it with the little blue check mark. I'm hoping you can see that. Can you see that all right there, Rebecca? Yes. Or should I, I might make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So if you see, I've put that little check mark there. Yeah, Just you may notice now. see if, if you increase the size, is, it might is, be easier to see. Did that increase it a little bit? Yes, it did. Okay. So if I select it and I click on the little blue check, make the little blue check mark happen, does everyone see if you watch up here along the gray area where it says library champagne on the left hand side and it gives me all these options across the middle. When I'm selecting a file or a folder, I get additional options beyond new and upload. So if I check mark that folder or that file, now I can do a whole bunch of stuff with this file, just like I could do on my actual computer. Delete it. I can move it. I can make a copy, I can rename it, and I can, you know, tag it or rotate it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move it to, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to say move to, and then I'm going to pick, and if you notice, this looks very similar to what you would find on your home computer in either File Explorer or Finder, where you're basically just going to tell it where to go. 
and I'm going to tell it to go to my kitten photos in January. And then I'm going to say move. So now it's going to move that kitten photo into my folder for kitten photos in January. Okay, so now I've uploaded something and I've put it where I want it to be. Any questions about that? I don't see any questions so far. Okay, so now that I've, I've uploaded it, I've moved it where I want it. Let's see what else I can do with it. So once I'm in the folder and I'm looking at my file, I can share it with someone else. I could download it to the computer I'm on, delete it. I could copy it somewhere else, rename it, add it to an album. I can make a tag where I could put like kitten and then search for kittens everywhere with anything that's been tagged like that. I can rotate it, embed it. So I can basically do any of those things I want. If I look over here on the very far right side, the little eye over here, gives me the information about this photo. So if I have shared this photo with someone, it'll show me down here that some, someone has access to it. And then I can manage that access by saying yes or no, I want them to have the permission to edit it, copy it, share it, or do what they want with it. Okay, so I can also add a caption to the image if I want. I can also, once I've shared it with people, people can comment on it and they can say, oh, what a lovely kitten. Is this your new kitten? What are the kitten's names? And that could all be in there. So when I share photos with my family, I do something similar to this where I share the photos and then they all comment on them if they want. Okay. And then a little further down, you have the general information about the date it was taken, um, the date it was created, the file path. How did I get, how do I get to it on the computer? and the size of the image. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and X out of that. And then let's go back to my files. Are there any questions about uploading a file to OneDrive? I don't see any so far. Okay, excellent. So now that I've uploaded something, let's go ahead and create a new document. Um, we're gonna do some cloud computing here. And I'm gonna come up and say, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and open Word online, and I'm going to create a blank document. And I'm going to say, this is a Word document created online. Okay. And you'll notice it's going to save it. And then I'm going to give it a name. And the name I'm going to give it is test document dot doc. And now you'll see down here, it's going to let me put a location. And right now the location is going to be OneDrive. I click on that. I can pick a specific location within OneDrive, like documents. Um, if I want, I can pick a different location, but I'm going to just say test folder and let's put it in there. Okay, so now you can see, here's the document I just created. Once it loads and where I've put it, okay. Oh, sorry, that's the one we used last time. Hold on, let me go back. Okay, so here's my recent, the one I just created. Text document. Okay, and now when I come back to my recent list, here it is. If I check mark it here, I get the same options across the top where I can move it to a folder or I can open it and do more editing on it. Okay, I could also download it. So if I was going to be at the library and I needed to work on this document, I started it at home, I could come over, I could open it, basically sign into my OneDrive account, open that document, make whatever changes I need to make. Um, I could download it and then I could print it from the library. Okay, any questions about that? And moving, moving things around? I don't see Uploading anything. Loading or creating documents? Okay, so let's go ahead and play with the shared things here. I'm going to go ahead and share my kittens, my kitten photo. So if I want to share this, again, all of your things that you can do is going to be along the top here, and we're going to go ahead and try to share it. 
And I'm going to now see that I get this little box that says anyone with the link can view this item. And then I can choose whether or not I want to allow them to be able to edit the document. I can set an expiration date and set a password. So I can either password protect it and say, hey, to, in order to view kittens in the grass, you're going to need, you know, XYZ password. And you're only going to have access for a month or more, whatever I decide. And then I can get a link specifically or and share that link with people. Or I can get send a direct email. So um, and then you have the option to do things with social media as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, instead of anyone with this link can view this item, I'm going to say, I will allow them to edit. And then I'm going to say, get a link. And here's my link that it's created. If I copy this link and I put it in an email, and now I'm going to send it to, I don't know, let's say, <clears throat> let's say um, I'll send it to myself. So I'm going to send it to my work address here. Um, and then I will say share. And it's going to go ahead and grant access to this image for that account. Okay. Any questions about that? I don't see any. Okay. I can also edit the image live up here if I hit edit. And this again now is cloud computing because then I can, you know, I can decide to crop it. So let's crop it in a little bit more. And let's go ahead and say yes to that. And go ahead and save the new version. And now you'll see it's been cropped in a little bit. And then if I come back out here, it's now cropped in a little closer. That edit that I just made is going to be on the version that was sent to the person I shared it with. So they're gonna see the cropped down version. Okay, so whenever you make any edits to something you've shared with another person, they'll see those edits that you've made. Okay, all right. So let me go through my notes here real quick and just make sure I've covered everything I wanted to. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, um, so talked about, you can also view things over here on the very right hand side. Um, let me go ahead and get a folder that has a couple more things in it. Um, let's see if pictures, yeah, pictures has two. Okay, so if I'm looking at my pictures folder and I wanna sort these items, I can come over here to where it says sort in the upper right hand corner and I can sort by the name or the date it was taken or the size or ascending or descending order. So A to Z or Z to A. I can also change whether it's going to be list, where it's just going to list out the file name <clears throat> and the date it was taken, and whether or not it's been shared with anyone else. Or I can do it as tiles, which will show me the thumbnail image like this. OK. Are there any questions about OneDrive and how it works to add things? I don't see any so far, but I'll let you know. OK, great. Thank you. Um, if you notice down in the bottom left hand corner here, this is one is an advertisement to get more space. And then below that, you'll see I've used 1.79 megabytes of my five gigabytes that I have for free. Um, and if I was getting close, you know, it would give me the little red thing and say, oh, you're almost out of space. And then I could decide if I wanted to buy space or if I wanted to delete some things off of my uh, OneDrive. So let's go ahead and we'll delete the Beagle puppy. We'll say we no longer need him. So I'll go ahead and check mark and say delete. And it's going to delete. And then they're going to go into the recycle bin. So now I see it in the recycle bin. And then I'll empty the recycle bin to get rid of that one altogether. Now, when you get rid of a document altogether, um, if it's something that you've shared with other people, it will prompt you by saying, so let's say if I take this one, and I go like this and I say, um, let's go ahead and open it. And I say, mm, let's say I wanna delete this one that I've shared with someone else. It should tell me when I go to uh, details, it's going to tell me that someone has access to it and that oops, and that I'm going to have to um, 
take away that permission before I delete it. So, and that's just a way to help protect protect you and the people that you've shared something with to remind you that um, you have shared it with someone. So you're gonna have to unshare it before you delete it. Okay, all righty. Other questions? So I do wanna mention Personal Vault. Personal Vault is a place where um, it adds an extra bit of security. So you put, it sends you either verification or to like two-factor authentication, which means it sends something like uh, a code to your phone where you need to then put that in um, to get into your personal vault, okay? So someone is asking if you can show the upload process again. And Absolutely. I think, I think that's through the person, they say from P and I think they mean personal vault. Okay. I'm not sure. So the personal vault, if you want to upload something to personal vault, you'd, you'd get into it first um, and you'd have to have your phone with the code to verify and then you could upload stuff to the personal vault. Um, you can also move stuff to the personal vault, but you have to, you, again, you get have to get that, that code because it's an extra step of security. Um, but I can show you uploading from, from the uh, physical computer. So if I go to upload and files, then I can pick whatever I wanna upload from my specific folder here. So for example, I'll take the puppy pile here and open and upload the puppies. And I could do the same thing with documents too. So for example, here's a Word document we've created. We'll go ahead and open that one and put it up here as well, okay? Then I can move it by check marking it and saying move to, picking the folder and then say move by hitting the blue move button. Okay. Does that answer, does that work for the I think so. We do have two okay. other questions sure. too. Mm -hmm. So one of these is, so it sounds like basically the cloud OneDrive acts like another folder, except there are extra features such as sharing with others. Yeah. So essentially all cloud storage and cloud computing providers, if they are um, storage and computing, will allow you to share files with others. Yeah. Um, and yes, it is. It's, ex it's, it's like an extension of your computer. Uh, so if you want to think of it like one giant folder, or you can think of it a little bit like your computer has, your physical computer has a hard drive. It's almost like the cloud is a second hard drive where you can put stuff. Yeah. Hoping that helps. We do have another question as well. Sure. Um, someone asked, what if I unshare it? What would happen on the end of the people who are accessing the sharing? Yes. So when you've revoked permission or you unshare it, then when they go to it on in you know their the link that has been shared with them, it'll tell them you that they no longer have access to this file. Mm -hmm. And that's also what will happen if you've put the expiration date on it. So if you give them, you know, say you're working on a project, uh, a presentation with um, someone else, and you say, okay, you know, my part's done. I'm sending it to you. You've got two weeks to look it over and then you know, make any changes you want to it. After that expiration date, if they try to go back into it, it'll tell them that they no longer have access to the file. Yeah, and you can see, I can show you that too. Um, if you go into shared and pick the one that you've shared with someone and you look at the info over here and I can click manage access and then I can say, okay, Susan, yeah, she can't see it anymore, stop sharing. And when I say stop sharing, that means I'm no longer gonna share it with them. They no longer have access to it. That does not mean they didn't already have access though. So what that means is if I had already gotten in, looked at it, copied it, downloaded it, did something with it, um, and then you revoked access. So you just wanna make sure that when you're sharing access for stuff, you, you put those parameters on it of if they can edit, or only view it or make comments, okay? And that's how I can revoke access. Okay, other questions? I don't see any so far. Okay, 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'll move on to uh, Google Drive then. And you'll notice that Google Drive is going to be very similar. So let me stop sharing that one. And I will share Google Drive instead. So this is our this is what Google Drive looks like. This is with our, our demo account here. Um, you'll also notice kittens again. <laughs> kittens feature prominently in just about every uh, tech workshop we do around here. Um, with Google, you would get a Google account and the Google account then gives you access to a Gmail account and then several other apps that you can use. Now with Drive, what we'll notice is on the left-hand side where we had the get into your other apps with OneDrive, it's actually over here on the right-hand side in the case with Google Drive. So you'll still see the nine little dots for the Google Apps. And when I click it, these are all the other apps that you automatically have access to by getting a Google account. I, I should point out too that if you have like a Microsoft email, you'll have access to all of the stuff on like the OneDrive, like you'll have access to their versions of like a word processor, spreadsheets, yeah. stuff like that. So it's yeah. kind of nice. You, you may not know you already have access to that with your accounts. And actually it's true with Hotmail too. So if you have a Hotmail account because they were bought by Microsoft. So if you have a Hotmail account or an Outlook account, you automatically have access to the 365 versions of Word, Excel, so Word for word processing, Excel for spreadsheets, and um, PowerPoint for presentations. Now, they're, they are slightly pared down versions than what you would have, say, in the desktop one that you put on your actual computer, um, but they'll still, you know, they'll still get the job done depending on what you're working on. So thank you, Rebecca. Yes, that's a good point. So, and the same, so the same thing is true with Google. Once you get a Google account, you have access to Google Docs sheets and slides, which are essentially the equivalents of those those uh, Microsoft products. OK, and um, but you'll see here, too, that search. So search and drive again, right in the middle, just like it was on OneDrive. And if I put in kitten, I bet we'll find no nothing under kitten. OK, cat. Ooh, nothing under cat. What did I name that one? Hmm. Let's go back to my drive and see what did I name it? Kitty. OK, of course. <laughs> So we'll put kitty in here instead. So I'm searching for it, I'll put in kitty, and then it'll pull it up for that image, okay? So just like in the other one, you can search. You can also search specific things. Like if I know it's a photo, an image, I can put in the image and I'll pull up all of my images. Um, if I know it's a PDF, put in PDF and it'll pull up the PDFs that I have in here, okay? All right, so then on the right hand side, the help button, that's again the question mark. Um, so if I wanted to look up how to do something, I could do that here. And then my settings gives me the settings for my Google account, which then I could change or, or switch or do something with if I wanted. And then the apps where I can go to any of the other apps and then the information about my account, okay? Now, along here on the very right hand side, <clears throat> if you see where it says calendar and then keep and tasks, these are some other apps that you can that have functionality um, that you can get into from the sidebar here. OK, let's go ahead and come back over to the left hand side and we'll talk about these things that we have here. So if we want to go back to drive the home part of drive, we just hit that drive button takes us back to our home, our home landing page, basically where all of our files are. If I click my drive, that's gonna bring up, of course, everything that's in my drive. Now this little collapsible arrow here will show me each of the fo folders that I have created. So just like on your physical computer, when you create folders and you can basically what we say is drill down to those different folders or if they're nested like one folder inside another, you can get to them by this path, okay? And then computers would be if I have a computer that I have synced. So just like when we were talking about iCloud earlier and how your iCloud can sync from your phone to your computer, the same thing is true with Google Drive. So if I wanted to, I could have my Windows computer set up so that every all these folders sync to Drive. Now, again, you can control that. So you can say, all right, I want my photos 
to sync to drive, but I don't want my documents to sync to drive. I want my budget 2022 folder to sync with drive, but not any of my other folders, okay? So you can, you can pick and choose to have that sync happen, okay? Uh, anything that's been shared with me will show up under the shared with me thing. So that's things that other people have shared with me. Recent, again, just like in the other one, things that we worked on recently are gonna show up there. If I've starred something, which means I've made it like a favorite, it'll show up in the starred section. And then we have the trash, okay? And then down here again, bottom left-hand side, you see how much we've used up of our storage. So we've used up five, roughly five, five and a quarter gigabytes of the 15 gigabytes that you get for free with Google, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my drive. Now, if I wanna create something new here, all I have to do is click on the plus sign here where it says new over on the left-hand side, and then I can pick what I wanna create. So if I wanted to create a new folder, I can tip there and let's give it a name. Let's say cat photos in January, 2022. And again, my naming conventions right now are not standard practice that I would normally use to name name files. Um, if you want to, we have class we have classes um, on uh, naming conventions and file storage and organization that you can take. Um, and the videos for those are online. Uh, maybe Rebecca, you'll uh, you could put the link in chat for anyone if they want to take the workshops on um, file storage for <laughs> an organization. Because this is not a very this is not how I would normally name this folder. But anyway. To go ahead and create it. Okay, so now I have cat photos in January. If I click on it, that takes me into that folder. There's no files in there are no files in there yet. I can go back to my drive up here. It takes me back home. If I come back to new, let's do that file upload where I'm going to put that picture of the cat that I have on my computer into Google Drive. So I'm going to do file upload. I'm going to pick that same picture of the kittens in the grass and say open. And that's going to open the and put the kittens in the grass here. If I click on it, did you see how things change up at the top? So if I select a file, I'll get new options. And they're over here. I'm going to try to highlight or run across them. Can you see where these are all turning gray at the top right corner? Yes. Now? OK. So whenever I select a file. For example, I just selected text doc test document two, and it turns um, has a little bit more of a blue color to it. I can do things with it up here. So this is where I have options to do things. Okay, so if I do that with my my kittens in the grass here, I could get a link and then I could share that link with anyone else that I wanted to share it with. I could share it specifically with certain people by the little person with the plus sign. If I want to preview it, I can hit the little I. If I want to delete it, I can hit the trash can. And then if I want more actions, here are more things I can do with it. So I can open it with different files, <coughs> or excuse me, different um, applications. I can show the file location. I can move it like we could do with the last one. And we're going to go ahead and do that in just a second. Um, but first, we could also make it a favorite. We could rename it. We can view the details of it, like when it was taken, how big it is, that kind of stuff. Uh, we can make a copy or we can download it. So if I'm here and I want to move it, I can go ahead and say move to, and we're going to put it in that cat photos in January folder. Okay, so now I'm going to move this to cat photos and I'm going to click move. And then it's going to take it out of the general file area and put it into my cat photos in January folder. Okay, now if I wanna share it, again, can click on it. Let's go up here, I can get a link. And if I want to, yep, okay. So if I wanna get a link, I can take this, copy that link, share that link with people. And right now it's restricted, which means only people added can open this link. So I'd have to add people up here to this list in order for them to get access. So if I picked um, 
this is our our other library account. If I pick that per and I say done, then that person's going to get a link to this. Okay. Again, I could also share it by using the link here to share with people and then add a person or otherwise. Okay. Any questions about sharing? We do have, have a question about yes. syncing. Someone sure. is asking mm -hmm. if you can demonstrate the sync. Um, I won't be able to demonstrate the sync with this computer because what it would do is then go ahead and sync with this um, the the work computer here. Uh, but I can show you. Let me see if I can kind of show you how it works. So if I was to put um, the basically. Google Drive for desktop, which is the piece that you put onto the desktop computer to then sync things. Um, it's called Google Drive for desktop. And basically it means that you can sync between the cloud and your computer specifically. So um, Streama, Miram, I'm trying to see if this will give me, um, and I can, I can share this with you um, in the follow-up email too so you know exactly how to do it too and they have a they have a tutorial um where i can um i think there's even that google has a tutorial uh, like a video showing you within the the watching of the video tutorials um but essentially what it does is says okay the cloud version is going to scan your physical computer and anything that's new since the last time, it's going to ask if you want to put it in the cloud. I hope that sort of answers the question. And then I'll put the tutorial in the follow up email so you can see how it actually works. Because of this, we don't want to actually link this particular physical computer to our, our um, training demo account. Okay. Hopefully that's okay for now. <laughs> I wrote that down in my notes so that we can okay. make sure to send that along. And they say yes. it's, it, the tutorial will work for them. Perfect. Yes. Um, and it can be, I've done that. I've done it with my, my home, my home computer, uh, where I have it synced with my Google, my Google drive. Um, and it, it's not, it's not a difficult process to get it started. Um, I decided I didn't like it because it had too much control and I want that kind of control. So I, I stopped it after a couple of weeks because I like to have control over what I put <laughs> and what I do and where I put things. Um, and it was just so, it, but it's up to you, of course. Um, everybody's personal preference will come into play here. So, okay. So uh, anyway, so now I've shared something. Um, if I wanna remove that access, I can also do that by going to the same file again. So let's come to this guy. And I'm like, all right, here he is. I know I've already shared it. So let me see if I can, the link or let's see, we'll go here. So here's where I shared it with. Um, um, oh, it should have added champagne librarian in there. I guess maybe they haven't, They oh, I didn't actually send the message, sorry. Okay, so if I'm sharing this, I put them in here and then I can make them an editor, a viewer or a commenter. So viewer would mean they can just view it. Commenter means they can they can write on it. So for example, if you're um, like you have a paper that you've written for school and you're having someone edit it for you or look it over, they can put comments in um, just like anyone else that was editing a document could do. Um, or if they can edit, then they can physically change um, the wording. So if I did, let's do editor here. Okay, so if I'm gonna be the editor and then I could just say send, and that's gonna send a link to share this. Now, if I decided I don't want them to have it, I can come back to here and now you'll see it says there in here is an editor and I can say remove and that will remove their access to it. Okay, because that's how, that's how Google handles that. Okay. Okay, questions about about sharing? I don't see any. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I'm keeping up on my notes here. Um, other things you can do. So if I'm in my drive, if I want to change how it looks, just like I did in OneDrive, 
over here on the right hand side, this thing that looks a little bit like a list, that's your list view. So list view again gives me the names of the files. Whereas if I do, um, I think they call it, they call it grid view. Better check grid view. Um, grid view will give me the little thumbnail images for everything. Okay, like this. Okay, now just like with OneDrive, when I'm creating a new document, I can also come here and say new and then make a new document. So if I want to make a new Google Doc, And again, just like I mentioned, this I could share this with someone else. They could edit it. Uh, I'm going to give it a title. And then it's saved. And it's automatically saved in my Google Drive. I don't have to remember to save it. Whenever I make a change, oops. See how it up in the top corner already says saving? It's already saving it. Um, so because it's live, it's a live document. So now that it's done there, it's been saved. If I close out of it up here at the top on the tab and I come back to my Google Drive, it's now gonna be saved here. So if you see where it says test January, 2022, if I click on it and I open it, here's my document, okay? So just like the other one, you can create it live, share it with someone else, they can collaborate. It's really quite nice, okay? Questions about any of that? Now, if you, have an, if you have an Android phone, you already have a Google account because Android phones require you to have a Google account. So you already have access to Google Drive and Gmail and Photos and everything, all the other Google services. Um, and you might notice on the uh, left-hand side here that you also have something that says backups. And backups would be the backing up of your phone and your phone information. And that happens automatically and it's something they do in the background so that when you get a new phone, all of your contacts and all of that stuff is also already saved. And it has the list of all the apps that you've downloaded. And when you get a new phone and you sign in with your Google account, that's when it immediately puts all that stuff back on there. So, so you can use up that 15 gigabytes pretty fast <laughs> with both a phone backup and, um, things that you put in photos or um, your email too. Okay, other questions? I don't see any. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and send something to Trash real quick since that's the other thing we did there. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna select my January test here, hit the trash can, send it to Trash. And now items in the trash, this is different from OneDrive, but Items in the trash are deleted forever after 30 days. So if you don't automatically do it, that's okay. It'll do it after 30 days, but it is still a good idea to go in and, and remove them yourself. But they will automatically um, be deleted forever after 30 days. And again, just like in the other one, if it's in your trash and it's hanging out in your trash, it is still taking up space in the cloud. Okay, all right. Other questions? Anyone I don't have see a anything. Question they'd like to ask out loud? Yeah, feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to speak your question rather than yeah. type in. And it. Um, the handout is basically step by step each of these things that I just went over very briefly um, because I'm also a visual person. So we have screenshot by screenshot, step by step, how to do those things like sharing a file with someone else, how to, what kind of permissions you can give them. Um, that's all in the handout. Okay, so I'll go ahead and go back to the handout real quick, just for the last thing. Um, oops, not that one. So I'm going to jump ahead here real quick. So like I said, everything is, you know, step by step, the navigation, how to get through, how to find things, and how to download or control, both for OneDrive and for uh, uh, Google Drive. moving and navigation. And I'm just moving through, I'm trying not to move through these so fast that it makes anybody um, sick <laughs> as I slide through things. 
Um, oh, here's an example where it says backups. So the backups would be if the sync devices like smart smartphones will show up. Okay. Okay. And then you can create, yep, like we did, we created a new folder. Um, and here are all the other options there. Um, if you do end up deciding to use Google Drive for things um, and you start using Google Docs, you can download Google Docs um, and then open them in Word. Um, you can upload Word documents to Google Docs. It, it's fine. Um, there is There occasionally are some uh, formatting issues with them because they don't always play super nice with each other, um, but you still have that functionality. Okay. And the sharing with Google Drive. And then I did want to bring up some additional resources. Um, here are, so GCF Learn Free and digitallearn.org are two uh, sites that we often send people to uh, for good uh, introductory tutorials on different tech topics. Um, and then, in, oh, here it is. This is the one I was thinking of. The inside of Google Data Center will show you, let's see if I can pull this up and see if we can get it to play. Can every can anyone see that what just opened? No. Let me let me share that. I'm going to stop sharing that and share this real quick. Okay. I'm going to share my screen where I just brought up inside of Google Data Center. Okay. You may not be able to hear it, but um, these are folks that work at a Google Data Center, and hopefully we'll be able to see a. Um, Let's see. So you can just see this big, this big facility. Oh, there was kind of a little. So anyway, it's kind of a fun little tour. Um, but if you see just beyond that there, I'm going to pause it. So here's an example. I'm hoping you can see this, Rebecca. Here's an example of what the yes. basically what a data farm looks like or a data center looks like um, with all the servers. Um, and of course, people have to maintain these systems. So a lot of the employees are maintaining these systems on a daily basis too. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of that now. Um, and we'll go back to the PowerPoint additional resources. Okay, there's also um, for Dropbox specifically, uh, a tutorial there. And then Google Drive and OneDrive also have their own tutorials too that you can access. And then there's also the one for Apple iCloud for their help and support pages too. And then LinkedIn Learning also has some iCloud training courses. Um, Rebecca has taken these and found them uh, useful as well uh, for getting started with iCloud specifically, specifically for questions um, like you were asking about, you know, being able to control what your phone is backing up and how to know what it's putting in the iCloud. Um, and if you have a champagne card, you have access to LinkedIn Learning, uh, and I recommend uh, checking out that course too. Okay, uh, so that's everything I have for today's session. Um, please feel free to ask questions. If you'd like anything demoed again, um, we are happy, happy to do that. Uh, our next class for this month is going to be Intro to Pinterest, which is next week, and that will be, Pinterest is a social media site. Um, it's a lot like uh, I think of it a lot like creative um, scrapbooking, bulletin boards, um, where you can basically put ideas together of things that you might want to do someday or like redecorate your house, things like that. Um, it can be very useful on the job, creative things on the job too, and organizing, um, visually structuring things. Um, we do also have Internet Safety for Adults, which is going to be Monday the 24th at 7. That is with the Illinois Attorney General's Office. We also have, as we've mentioned a couple of times, our webinars are available on our YouTube channel. You can go to champagne.org slash YouTube. And then, of course, we send out the video for today. We'll send that after, too. And then we do also have book a librarian appointments, where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with a library staff member for... And then we have a live chat and of course the email you can send to us too. Oops, okay. All right. Okay. And then I don't know if, if uh, Rebecca, if you wanna jump back in with your thing here and then we can check if anybody else has questions. Any other questions? So. Okay, so there is a question. Okay. 
So question is, do you think that a hired tech geek would be able to set a person up with a good backup system using a cloud, et cetera, then with the new info we acquired through you today, we could maintain it ourselves, question mark. Um, it would depend on how complex of a backup system your tech geek person uh, set up for you. Um, the stuff that we talked about today and anyone um, the nice thing about the things that we talked about today, anyone can can basically get a Google account or a OneDrive account and start putting stuff there um, and start playing around with it and start sharing permissions and things like that. Um, and again, you can always rewatch the video um, and kind of uh, take it take it all in, give it a little time to kind of absorb, um, look over the handout. Uh, and then, you know, again, if you have questions on this stuff, of course, we can we can also help you. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment, the book a librarian appointment, um, to help get you started with with either of these um, these services. Uh, if you want someone else to help set it up for you, ab you absolutely can do that. Um, I would just say make sure that they also then, rather than set it up for you, they also show you how to do things going forward. Um, that's the biggest thing. I think a lot of times. Uh, you know, folks are doing it for you and then they just kind of leave you, <laughs> leave you on a, it's like having a rife, uh, uh, being on a raft without a life, you know, a life preserver or whatever. Um, and you're kind of trying to navigate the ocean yourself without knowing which direction to go. So um, it's just good to have them to go ahead and say, okay, I want you to set this up for me, but then I also want you to sit down and walk me through what I need to do to maintain it in the future. Um, and hopefully they'd be able to help if you, you out can if you're the one that is doing the hands-on stuff as well that's helpful mm -hmm. too yeah. for me i know i learn a lot if i'm not only seeing the stuff but i go through the motions of doing it myself yes because a lot of it comes down to just making those decisions on your own and figuring mm -hmm. out what does what trial and error yes so. And I, I like to say, whenever I'm learning something new, I want someone to show it to me, then I want to do it with my, you know, I want to drive and I want them to kind of be my, my backseat, uh, backseat driver, <laughs> passenger, where mm -hmm. like, they just say, okay, yeah, no, you really should have turned left here and you turned right. So head back that way. Um, and then that helps me. So the, the, the goal hopefully is that with these videos is kind of the introduction to things um where you can follow along and get started and then uh you know we can help you to we can sit there at the book of librarian appointments if you want and be your your passenger while you drive and we'll help you navigate um so we're sort of i don't know why i picked car analogy but <laughs> i use the car analogy a lot too <laughs> we're like the navigator we can be the navigator for you um you know in the the passenger seat to help you kind of figure it out and then and then you also get to ask your questions in real time too um as they come up because sometimes you know there are things that you don't necessarily anticipate and then they just pop up on the screen um and you have to you know figure out what to do with them or close out of them and um we're, I mean, we're happy to happy to help anyone with that too. So, um, but yeah, you could you could absolutely have someone else set something up for you, um, and then you could say, "Hey, look, um, now that you've set it up for me, explain to me what I need to do to keep it and maintain it." And hopefully, they would be able to do that for you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with, with again with Google and even iCloud, um, the basic stuff is all stuff that. Uh, after a couple of times of either watching the video or going through it as you set stuff up, hopefully you'd be able to, to start to maintain it yourself too. So it's very similar to what every, what we all, sh so for me, I back my, I back up stuff once a month, which usually means I take whatever some most important documents that I've created in the last month and I put them in the cloud. I do it once a month, other people do it three months, six months, Whatever, whatever works best for you and your personal situation and what you feel most comfortable with. So, and that's how all of it should operate, I think. Other questions? But yeah, you should absolutely be able to maintain it yourself um, going forward once you have these kind of basic, uh, basic tools in place.
that's my, I think, that's my, I think the main thing is you probably don't want to depend on someone else's expertise to, to interact with your personal files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our goal here, our goal here is basically to get you started on the way to being able to maintain things yourself and make those decisions for yourself. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then you have, you have that control. So. Other questions? I don't see anything in, in the chat, Actually. but feel free to raise your hand if you want to. Yeah. And again, you can always, you can always reach out to us. Um, with I'm our, email our emails and yeah if you can put those in quick. there um and then again you can reach out librarian at champaign uh if you'd like to do a book a librarian we have um an online form you can fill out it's uh champagne.org slash book a librarian and you can fill out that form and just say want to learn more about cloud services uh would like someone to walk me through getting a google account or you know anything like that and we can help with those too so I so, put in both of our emails as well as the librarian email. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when we do these these workshops in person, which we we hope to go back to in person at some point um, soon, uh, we have training laptops where everybody can sit down in front of a training laptop and do it live in person, too. Um, and you're more than welcome to come into the library and sit down at one of our computers and start this process, too, and then ask for help from the staff at the desk, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're happy to do that as well. So, yeah. And if you're elsewhere in the country, feel free to call. We can try to do a phone, a phone, uh, a phone BAL or a, a virtual BAL for you as well, where we can go over things and have you let you ask your questions. We've been doing we've been doing virtual ones um, since the beginning of the pandemic too. So, and you don't have to have a champagne card to do a book a librarian. Any right. other questions? Other questions? I don't see anything so far. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, if you're interested, please join us for Intro to Pinterest next week. Um, and then again on the 24th, um, Internet Security. Uh, I think this will be the third time we've had them come. That one is not recorded. Um, so if you do want to attend that one, please attend it live. Um, the Illinois Attorney General's Office, we do not record those sessions. Um, but they do provide a lot of valuable information, especially about scams um, right now related to COVID and the pandemic, um, which they have definitely seen an uptick in um, uh, different um, bad actors trying mm -hmm. to get your get your information. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Well, thank you, okay. everybody. Again, feel free to reach out to us later if you have more questions. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye.